All right, guys. Sorry. Let me. Uh, I just gotta erase this real quick. Okay. Here we go. So number one, um, we have a descent vehicle landing on Mars. So we're given the uh, y component of the velocity, and we're given the x component of the velocity. Don't forget to add these two vectors tail to tip. If you do them out of order, then you will uh, get the wrong angle. So, to find the resultant velocity, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now we have um, the answer to part A. The actual speed would be 6.5 meters per second. And to find the angle, you can use uh, really any trig function that you want. The best one to use is the tangent function, because if you use the tangent function, you are only using... Um, values for the sides of the triangles that you know for sure. Like for example, if we use a tangent function, we're dealing with 3.5 and 5.5. I know that those are both correct because they're given in the problem. If you use your sine or your cosine function, you're going to have to use that 6.5. So if you did that wrong, then you'll get the wrong answer for this part too. Okay, for number two, we are given, uh, let's see, an applied force. And we're dealing with friction here, so I, I'm going to go ahead and label my, uh, my free body diagram with, with friction as well as the normal force and force of gravity. Let's go ahead and figure out the force of gravity because we know the mass of the object. We don't know what the force of friction is, but it says in the problem that we're moving at constant velocity. Well, constant velocity means we can use Newton's second law in the x direction and just use zero on the right side because there's no acceleration. This means that the applied force must be equal to the force of friction. So now we know the force of friction must also be 30 newtons. Let's take a look at our formula for the force of friction. Mu times the normal force. Well, we know what the normal force is. So we can divide both sides by the normal force in order to solve for mu. When you get your answer for mu, make sure it's a value between 0 and 1. It does not have units. In this problem, we're going to set up our free body diagram. We do have an applied force and we also have friction. We don't know what the force of gravity is, but we can find that because we have the mass. The normal force is going to be the same as the force of gravity. Let's set up Newton's second law in the x direction. The applied force minus the force of friction is going to be equal to the mass times acceleration, which are both given in the problem. So now I know what the force of friction is. Let's take a look at our formula for the force of friction. Force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. I know what the normal force is, so I can divide both sides by the normal force to solve for mu. Make sure that mu is between 0 and 1. Number 4, we have Mr. Warner driving his car. We're given the velocity initial, the distance, so it kind of looks like a kinematics equation, doesn't it? Well. We need to find acceleration because we're dealing with friction here, which means that we're dealing with Newton's laws, which means that we got to find the acceleration. So we have enough information already to find acceleration. Let's just stop there for a second so you can take a look at what I did. All I did was I took what I was given in the land of kinematics and I used one of my formulas to solve for the acceleration. Now that I have the acceleration, I can start dealing with the forces. So let's take a look at the forces that we have. Let's get our free body diagram going on here. There's only one force in the x direction because there's no applied force. We only have friction. This is just like those problems where you have like a shuffleboard puck and it's just sliding, ag sliding across the ground, slowing down. The only force acting on the car here is friction because he's taken his foot off the gas pedal and put it on the brake pedal. Okay, let's stop here for a second. I set up Newton's second law in the x direction. There is no positive force. There is no force to the right. So that's why I put zero there. Now to the left, in the negative direction, we have the force of friction. And we can set that equal to mass, which is given, times acceleration, which we figured out. It's a negative acceleration because we're slowing down. So now we can um, solve for the force of friction. Now that we know that, we can plug that into our definition of the force of friction, mu times the normal force. Knowing what the normal force is, we can solve for mu. And you want to make sure that mu 
is a number between 0 and 1. Okay, uh, <clears throat> number 5, we're given um, five different forces acting on an object. The first one's in the y direction, the second one's in the x direction, the third one's in the y direction, the fourth one's in the x direction, but the fifth one, uh-oh, it's at an angle. So you know what you got to do. You got to turn it into its x component and its y component. Use the cosine function for the x component, use the sine function for the y component. Now I have everything in terms of x and y. Let's add up all the x's. 40 minus 40 plus 25 equals 25. And then the y direction, 60 minus 80 plus 43.3. Let's pause it there for a second. So what I did was I added up all my x's. If it's right, it's positive. If it's left, it's negative. And then I added up all my y's. If it's up, it's positive. If it's down, it's negative. So then I drew the resultant vector for both of them. I used yellow to draw the x component. I used red to draw the y component. But take a look at what the question is actually asking. It says, what are the magnitude and direction of a sixth force that would produce equilibrium? So equilibrium means that everything cancels out. So if I have my total force to the right as 25 and my total force in the up direction as 23.3, that means a force that would cancel it out would be a force to the left at 25 and a force down at 23.3. That's what would cause equilibrium, the exact opposite. So now I can find the resultant of my two opposite sides using the Pythagorean theorem. I get 34.2. I'm going to go ahead and find my angle too. I'm going to use the inverse tan function to find my angle 43 degrees in the um, south of west direction. Alternatively, you can express the angle as, um, as measured from zero in the counterclockwise direction. I believe that's all we have. I'm going to skip number six in this video. I hope that this was helpful.